This is the Mandalorian, the explosion of after show, breaking down, discussing, and reviewing each and every episode of the Disney Plus original Star Wars series, The Mandalorian. My name's Dylan Blight, and joining me, Ashley Hobley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here to talk about this first episode of Rangers of the New Republic. <laughs> we don't talk about the show. It's dead. It never happened. It was never announced. It was never going to be a thing. No one ever heard yeah. about it. No, they were clearly building a show around, mm. uh, what's his name? Mm. Mm. And that's what this episode turned into, because they Captain didn't have that Captain Carson? Treasure. Tiva? Tiva? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is chapter 21. Wow. Yep. I was saying that out loud, I was like, what the fuck? That's actually... uh, chapter 21, The Pirate, directed by Peter Ramsey, of course, written by John Favreau. Synopsis was, the people of Navarro need protection from rampant pirate attacks. What did you make of this week's episode? I mean, again, it was a per- solid episode. Uh, also, there's just a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> um, I mean, there was some ga- cool battles and stuff, and like uh, you had to see Old Mate for the first time in several years, you know? He's been four years, but he's still doing the same job. Uh yeah. Out on the outer rim. Uh, lucky you can yeah. remember that one time that he caught up with. <laughs> He's like, that uh, one guy I met years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For an unspecified amount of years. Yes. Um, yeah. I think, you know, it was cool. You know, it's <laughs> fun to see Swamp Thing come back. Uh, you know, and then they've got, I guess they did, they are sort of setting up where we could, bet- we're hopefully going for the rest of the season, which is. The return of Moff Gideon and you know the bringing to, the attempt to bring Mandalore together. Yeah, there's um, potential there. Yeah, I mean the I thought it was a, a fun episode, but like everyone, there's just there's like there's just it, there's just such so random stuff in this show. Sometimes, <laughs> like when they get into the 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 big uh, uh, saving the planet scene, whatever you want to call it, planet quotation marks. They're like, Grief Kong's like, you saved the whole planet. It's a fucking small town, but yeah, sure, whatever. (laughs) Um, When they get to that, amongst all of that, they randomly at some stage, they cut away to a 2.5 second shot of a Mandalorian riding a ship to the ground. And then, (laughs) <laughs> just cut back like where'd that guy come from <laughs> it's like such so that's just, just like stuff in this show where someone goes it looks fucking cool yeah but what who yeah. is that guy like what where wh- that's random looks fucking cool like all right yeah i mean you're right it does look cool but random so um yeah i thought it was a it was a fun episode that hopefully gets uh things moving in an interesting direction for the rest of it and the the whole like the action piece of this episode was fun and I, I I enjoy the pirates. I like how the pirates have uh seemingly just picked up one of every species. One of this is where all the aliens have been this entire time. Yep. <laughs> they're all pirates. Yeah. Can't join the Empire, so they're pirates. Makes sense. And they're using a uh a uh, hammerhead ship, most which would of course you would have seen in Rogue One. They crash it into the you know, yeah. they crash it into the, the big ship to drive it into the, the barricade the uh, over Scarif. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that was that's cool to see as a, a pirate ship deployed that way, which was really cool. Yeah. Cannot go past the one moment that, and one bit of fan service that did work for me this episode, though. Do you know what this is, Ash? Have you seen this? No. No, so you wouldn't have. See, I, I'm sure when you say it, I'll go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I heard the voice before I saw the face, and as a true fan... I knew straight away there was a little cameo coming up. At the very start of this episode, when we have Captain Carson Teva, Teva, how do you say his name, uh, in his little bar or restaurant or whatever at the New Republic School, he talks to someone, and that character is Zeb of the show Star Wars Rebels. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I did remember seeing him. Oh, it's like weird that, you know, he's one of that species. That's cool mm. that they've added this into the show. <laughs> But no, it's actually Zeb. It's actually Zeb, yeah. <laughs> so, because I'm sitting there going, that's fucking Zeb. And I'll wait for it. So then I did the whole, you know, when it gets to the end of the episode, I was like, I need 100% confirmation, you know. But I can't wait 
for the internet to tell me. I need now confirmation now. Um, and I did the, you know how Disney does that whole stupid thing where it stop when it gets out of the, the, the yes. main credits with the things and you have to like click back Just into it. Just let us set the settings, yeah. all right? <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. So it does that whole thing. I'm like, no, like click back into it. And then you do like, you're sitting there staring, pause. Z- Steve Blum, Zeb. Yep. All right, now we're good. Yeah, so yeah, 100% Zeb's first uh, live action live action appearance. in quotation marks but yeah uh appearance in this which is which was cool to see so i mean considering yep, setting we're, up his appearance in ahsoka you know? yeah i mean ahsoka's gonna feature i'm pretty sure every remaining star wars rebels person um who's alive rest in peace kanan um so that'll be that'll be good so uh but yeah that was a little bit of a, a fun little easter i got stuck for for rebels fans but yeah getting into the rest of the episode so the way things start, having Carson, Captain Carson back, uh, that's fun. Like, it's a fun little character to hang around for a couple minutes. Although, the second he heads out to the New Republic um, and tries to get permission to do this rescue mission, I know it's the point. It's still frustrating that you're like, man, the New Republic are dumb. Which, which is the point. I think. I think the point is, obviously, hey... For anyone who questioned watching the sequel, the the sequel trilogy, how the fuck did Palpatine and Kylo and all these people manage to, you know, like make such a big group within like First Order and like how did they gather all this in the outskirts of the galaxy without ever being noticed? Yeah, I think the answer is obvious. The New Republic is fucking useless. <laughs> is, <laughs> is and I, mean, I think yeah. that's the point. <laughs> like. They're, they're like any power. They're like super focused on the city and don't really care about yeah. anybody in the country, I guess, or the small regional. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that, the yeah. most people are in the city, so, or the central Coruscant or whatever. So they're the people they care about the most. Fuck everybody else. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, <clears throat> so, yeah. Well, if the, if the show if if this series is setting out to do a couple things, and one of those things is explain just sort of how dumb the New Republic is and how what they did happened because they're sort of dumb, then insert yeah this as an example of why. Uh, at the same time, I will say also as much as I enjoyed the pirates, I also think the pirates suck as pirates. So I think the New Republic <laughs> sucks as a republic, and that's shown this episode. I also think it shows that these pirates suck because <laughs> they get fucked up. Like that's the thing. I was like, he's really coming in with one ship, think you're gonna own this planet forever, and no one's ever gonna come in. Like you you literally get messed up. So I don't know. Um also, what did you make of that little snitch uh Elia Kane Car- or whatever her name is, with her coming into the room and having to suck ass there? When Carson's visiting the lieutenant, I mean it's interesting because obviously we we definitely got the impression that like she's working for somebody or doing something else. I don't think it's definitely she's definitely got her own motives. Mm. Yeah, so that's quite interesting. Um, you know, again, this feels like a story thread that if the if the Rangers of the New Republic show had gone ahead. Or well, this is a thread they pulled from that show and put in this, you know. Or well, that well, was- this would well, this was meant to be here, and then like six episodes of The Mandalorian would have showed up in that yeah. show. So, well, it is interesting because I think it was Filoni or someone said in the interview last week that that big crossover event they were planning is still going to happen. So, because when they announced it all, they were like, "Here's all the shows we're going to do, and they're all going to culminate in this massive Disney Plus Star Wars like crossover event or whatever." So, yeah. Now yeah, so they need to put all those stories somewhere. Yeah, they're like, "Let's put fucking an episode Gina Carano, in- fucking everything, <laughs> <laughs> fucking just you know, all you had to do is not be transphobic. Was it that hard? Apparently, yes." For a, lot for a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> it's unfortunately perfect, yeah. Uh, so when we get down to the flick across to the Mando stuff, I did find it very funny how Carson finds them and then straight away is like, you got a fucking snitch in here. 
And then everyone looks around. Like, he, they can't see each other anyway because they're in these stupid helmets. And then it proves to be that piece of shit R5. <laughs> <laughs> Little sneaky fucker. Beep, beep, Talk beep, about beep. lucky, huh? Mm, lucky for some. Uh, this... I gotta be honest. I think one of my favorite scenes this whole season so far is what actually happens here before they leave for the rescue. Because it just baited and switched me out so hard that I that I gotta respect it. Which is yep. the the whole this moth get no uh, this car grief cargo motherfucker. <laughs> he tried to kill us. I'm I'm like listening to this speech going, Mando, you're about to head in Bo Katan. You're on your own. Like, I don't know how you expected this. I don't know if I said fully. But then the, but guess what? We're Mandalorians. That means we're, we're fucking hell, motherfucker. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, you got me. Because I, yeah, I fully wasn't expecting that. But that also helps last week's episode make a bit more sense with the saving yeah. the kid. So he gets respect a bit more and all this sort of stuff and whatever else. So, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that. I, I, I quite like that. Uh, yeah. my biggest question though is well, firstly, thank fuck they're finally leaving this devil planet they've been staying on where <laughs> everything tries to thank kill god, them. Thank God, thank yeah. God, someone found us. <laughs> so it really is. A, it's a huge blessing in disguise, I think. But the <laughs> second thing is, did they or did they not take those chicken things with them? Hard if they say. did, where? You know, maybe on one of the other ships we didn't see. They have one ship. Mando flew in. Bo-Katan flew in. Well, did you see all the little kids come with them as well? No, so I guess they got to go back. No, and get so them. there's like a bunch of people still there. No, so they got to go back in case to things planet. went pear shaped. Next episode, they turn up back on that planet. They're all the kids are dead. Fucking eaten by <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> eaten by the crocodile. <laughs> That's what you get for leaving them alone. <laughs> Going to take this. Griff Carg is going to turn up next episode. And be like, you've brought a, a a type of wildlife into this planet that isn't meant to be. Ruin the gun. It ruin the ecosystem. You've ruined my ecosystem. Yeah. <laughs> That's really. Why would you do that? It's fine. It's, it's like a massive you, planet. You know. Yeah, and they got a small city, so yeah, it's, yeah, it makes sense. I uh, what? How do you? I really enjoyed the. The whole action scene, though, I guess, which was the majority of Did you like the whole, you know, Mando flying in, drawing them all out? Like, I, I thought it was a, it was yeah, a fun I mean, action fun. scene. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was a fun action scene. The Mandalorian Again, showcasing dropping a super down. fast ship. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's showcasing. Yeah, it, uh, right? it, it does a good job of showcasing it. Like, it, it definitely looks strong. You know, it looked like it could outpace most ships just in um, from a pure perspective of speed and maneuverability, which I guess is the point. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this uh, this whole th- thing. I like how old mate comes down and fucks him up with his Gatling gun, and the armor just doesn't use guns, I guess, or whatever. Nope. Hammers only. Hammers only. It's like you know, everyone everyone else is playing normal mode, and like Thor, she's over there just playing Call of Duty with hammers only mode on. Um, <laughs> good bit though. Uh, then we get at the end of this episode. Obviously, the what did you make of the armorer calls in Bo Katan? Hey, I need to talk to you. Take your helmet off. I'm sitting there going, "What the fuck? This is trap. <laughs> this is entrapment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't do it. She's gonna turn around and be like, Aha! You, need to, you <laughs> failed the sucker. test. <laughs> you need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, off you go. <laughs> so, yeah, what 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 did you make of this? Do you think because the armorer is I feel like for most people, this interesting character, but also sits on this weird line of, you never really understand if she's a good guy or a bad guy. You know that no, she's, she's out. she's kind she's of a, this weird cult leader, as people yeah. have been talking about, um, at least online. Like, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it was super weird uh, that she asked Bo-Katan to take it off and, like, nobody else. It's like... <laughs> She didn't go, oh, for now on, you're allowed to take your helmets off. Mm. So, no, nah, you do it. And if I change my mind about you, you know, at least we uh, will all be safe in the way, doing the way things they're meant to be doing. 
Yeah, she's, was- really, she's not. She she's putting all the owners on Bo-Katan and putting her, no skin in the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally taking no risk. Did th- it's very interesting though. Um, I, d- I definitely feel like the armor is someone who's like in it for her people. I don't. I don't doubt that. But whether or not she's got the the good of Bo-Katan in her mind or anyone else, yeah. I'm, I'm doubtful of that. I don't. I don't doubt that she's she's trying to look after her group of of Mandalorians. But uh, yeah. So she sends she sends her off. I, I mean, there was a second there. I was like, she's just going to walk Bo-Katan out and go fight this motherfucker right now for the dark saber. But that didn't happen anyway. Uh, mm. This. Could see that still happening, to be honest. But mm. she says, "You're going to go on this little trip, Bogotan. You're going to go around. It's time to finally reunite all the Mandalorians. Uh, we're going to take ma- back Mandalore, which I do feel like it was a huge jump because it's sort of the way it plays out is in in a way of her going, Dharma having just watched them save this planet, and then going, oh shit, she could cut, you, you you could kind of lead a team. That's, yeah." Yeah, okay. I didn't realize. It's, it's uh, very yeah, much just, a stretch. <laughs> yeah. It was like, so after why now are you deciding? Yeah. Why not when they talked about going to actually Mandalore? Yeah. It's just like, I mean, seems. I'm sure, right. you know, she told you about the Mythosaur thing two episodes ago. Yeah. Oh, and no, now she's suddenly episode. like, yeah. Now she's just like, overnight. Well, you know that thing you said that I completely brushed kind off? Kind of uh, no sold. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm all in. It was a big deal. <laughs> Massive. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a bit weird, I thought. But yeah. uh, did, you, did you take it in a way that Mando's going to go with her or is she just being sent off on her own? Or what do you think is going to happen there? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like Mando will go around and help, you know. But Yeah, because I feel like if she goes off, what's Mando doing? Like, I, I, yeah, Farming. I Lit- yeah. Sheriffing. Yeah. If he's not, the show does not have Din, uh, Din in it anymore. He's just chilling, farming. Uh, and then we, obviously we we get the final scene of the episode, which is uh, Captain Carson finding this ship in hyperspace or in the middle of space. Sorry, coming out of hyperspace, finding the ship in space, floating there. It's been shut down, destroyed, sort of ripped apart from the side. For a hot second, I was like, only because Zeb had been early in the episode, I was like, are we? Are you trying to imply this is the ship Ezra and Fromron? And then they were, that was that was not the case. But I think it was just solely because that Zep was on my mind. Wow. Anyway, I was like, this seems random, but whatever. Mm. Then the reveal is that it was the the prison ship that Moff Gideon was supposed to be on. Uh, they was being transported on. Someone got in, took Gideon. His body's not on there, but a, a bunch of other bodies are. And there's some Beskar that's been... Uh, implanted within the yep. the ship. So there's multiple ways you can take this. So you tell me which one you think you, you're okay. leaning towards. You've got option A. It's another group of Mandalorians. No, sorry. It's our group of Mandalorians who just decided to kill him and they're keeping it secret. Option B. It's another group of Mandalorians who are just out for their own or working with the First Order or some some shit like that. Or option C, it's a group of non-Mandalorians being framed. What do I you think it. I think it's option D. Yeah. So I think it is a group of Mandalorians who believe that Moff Gideon is still the rightful holder of the Darksaber and thus the rule of Mandalore. Yeah. I don't I, know. I, did you watch the before, like the previously on the other side of the episode? No, I skip all that shit. So they specifically highlighted Jin, uh, Jin being asked, oh, did you kill Moth Gideon? He said, no, I left him alive. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, I, I, can get, I can get behind that. I think that's a, it's probably the most likely theory and thing that would make sense, especially yeah. given this, the way yeah. that helps sort of all the storylines help converge going forth where Bo-Katan, Katan, fucking... Both. It's a way for uh, Bogotan to get the dark saber without fighting Jin. <laughs> yeah. So she she has to head out. She's going to bump into this group. Eventually, bumps into Moff Gideon. If they have her kill Moff Gideon, and then she finally like she's like, yes, that makes sense. I'm now the rightful owner. And then Jin get 
just gets to go, yeah, cool. Well, I tried to give it to you once before. Here you go. Like, <laughs> we take it this time because I don't really want it. Here you go. Like, yeah, yeah that, it's, I, it's like that. Uh, the wand in that other property. Yes, correct. But yeah, I, th- I, I think that's a good out for the the whole. You ha- not having to have those two fight because I don't really want them to have to fight. Because again, I've said a few episodes ago, I don't want the, the season to be set up in a way where I've got to you know, these two are suddenly on all different sides and having to fight each other. I want them to work together. So having yeah. Moff, Gideon somehow survive, like every character in Star Wars, somehow they survive, um, and then be killed by Clone. by her, would make sense. We'll get into it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, anything else from this week's episode that I've missed? Like, not really. No, anything. Tim Meadows. Interesting that he's the colonel dude. Uh, again, the yeah. Why? I mean, Tim Meadows is a known comedian, just okay. in a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah. I mean, it was cool. Again, it felt like another show kind of forced itself into the Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, they love forcing shows into which is Star what Wars. the the Star Wars universe is about. You know, yeah. Stick a bunch of bad batch episodes and your Clone Wars. Which yeah. <laughs> Switch a bunch of rebel stuff and everything else, yeah. Yep. That's how I love my Star Wars. It's like some wheat bigs where every now and then you get some fruit loops. <laughs> I don't think anybody's accidentally put fruit loops in the wheat bigs. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you for joining us on the Mandalorians. You can of course find this show on explosionnetwork.com, youtube.com slash explosion network, and all good podcast services including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And you can find all our other Star Wars shows on the Holocron pod, Holocron Entries podcast feed, including the very bad match, which just wrapped up. You can catch me and Ash's thoughts on the season finale or the season finale two-parter episodes uh, on the podcast feed as well by the time you're listening to this. Follow our Twitters, explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter, and uh, check out explosionnetwork.com slash Discord to come talk to us about anything over there, including Star Wars. Until next week, we have spoken. Thank you.